On this episode of Tony's Fords and Mustangs, we're going to talk about the 2012 and 13 Boss 302s. We're also going to take a ride with a car that was special ordered directly from Ford Motor Company. It has the owner's name on the winded sticker. Stay tuned. The original Boss Mustangs built in 1969 and 70 were legendary cars. They've been coveted by collectors for the last 30 years or more. These were cars whose names conjured thoughts of domination in the Trans Am series. They were driven by other legends such as Parnelli Jones and George Falmer, and they were campaigned by yet another legend, Bud Moore. So when Ford decided to revive the Boss 302 badge, they knew exactly what they were aiming for and the reputation they needed to live up to. Some time behind the wheel of one of the 2012-2013 Boss Mustangs quickly reveals that the team from Ford that oversaw the development of this car completely understood this, and they made it their goal to produce a car worthy of the nameplate. Some background information. I owned a 2013 Boss 302 from 2013 to January of 2021. I put roughly 40,000 miles on the car, took it to several road courses, and drag raced it multiple times. I really think Ford hit the mark with these cars as the Boss Mustangs handle extremely well. Whether it be a twisty country back road or on a road course, the car always feels planted. Now granted, I typically adjusted my shock settings from the environment I was going into and I always had a compact flathead screwdriver located in the center console just for this purpose. The heart of this car is the engine. Ford took a standard 5 liter Coyote engine and reworked it. Upgrades included a forged rotating assembly. The crank, rods, and pistons were all forged aluminum. The heads were CNC ported for maximum airflow. Ford added revised camshafts and a high flow runners in the box intake taken directly from the 302R race car. The engine is now dubbed the Roadrunner and it produced 444 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque. Ford's track key, or the red key, this gave you a second set of PCM software instructions. This track mode software altered more than 200 engine management parameters. It increased low end torque and turned the boss into a competition ready track car. It also enabled a lopey idle feature, which is similar to the big cam sound of the 69 and 70 muscle cars. According to the Mustang's chief engineer for the boss project, anything that could possibly affect all out performance was deleted from the track key calibration. Throttle limiting and torque management, any daily drive ability enhancements were removed and replaced with a pure Ford Racing Competition calibration. This engine was made into a 6-speed MT82 manual transmission. This is one of the weak points of the car, but we'll get back to that later. Power is delivered to a 373 ratio rear axle, and for those that wanted even more precise control over power delivery, a torque sensing Torsen limited slip differential is available when coupled with the Recaro front seat option. Boss cars came equipped with a quad exhaust system. It was made up of two additional outlet side pipes that exit on either side of the rear crossover just in front of the rear wheels. The side pipes send extra exhaust notes through metal discs with a small hole in the center to create an extra growling exhaust sound. Those discs were removable and that's the first thing most boss owners did to the cars when they received them. The Boss 302 suspension was made up of a Mustang GT suspension, but with higher rate spring coils, stiffer bushings, and larger diameter rear stabilizer bar. The body was lowered 11 millimeters, basically a half inch up front, and just one millimeter in the rear. The shock absorbers in all four corners are adjustable. They had five settings. These settings were changed at the top of the shocks themselves, and you used a flathead screwdriver to set the dampening rate. The standard Mustang traction control system and electronic stability controls had been altered. They had a new intermediate sport mode designed to allow for more flexibility on the track. Ford says this is the first non-SVT Mustang capable of passing 1G in lateral acceleration testing. There were 19-inch black alloy racing wheels. They were 9 inches wide up front and 9.5 in the back, and they came fitted with 255-4019 front tires and 285 3519 rear tires. These were Pirelli P0 tires. Brake calipers were Brembo's, four piston in the front, 
on 14-inch vented rotors. In the back, you had a standard Mustang GT brakes, but they were equipped with a Boss-specific high-performance pad compound. Ford produced a total of 8,289 Boss 302 models in 2012 and 2013, and right around 750 of those models each year were Laguna Secas. This low production number makes the second-gen Boss 302s actually rarer than the 69s and 70s. Many called it the best Mustang ever produced. It was balanced. It could handle well. It accelerated well. 0 to 60 was done in 4.3 seconds. The standing quarter mile car and driver timed at 12.8 seconds at 113 miles per hour. My best time in my car was a 12.89 at 115. And yes, there are much faster quarter mile Mustangs, but few cars wearing any badge provide such a complete package at a price point at the Boss Mustang. Now some of the not so great things. The solder rear axle will occasionally let you know it's there should you encounter an uneven road surface. It'll skip out for maybe a millisecond. That said, it's a very minor knock on the car. The rear axle was very well sorted and stable 99% of the time. The biggest issue with these cars is the MT82 transmission, or more to the point, second and third gear shift lockout. This is only an issue for me over 7,000 RPM, and I've been told this goes away with a clutch replacement, but I cannot attest to that. I can say that a $35 white line transmission mount insert and a Barton shifter with a two-post bracket helped tremendously. So I had a chance to spend a morning with Randy Ream. Randy Ream was pivotal in, well actually it was him and one other gentleman that started the Boss 302 registry back pre-internet days, back when you had to mail information back and forth. I did video his 69 a few weeks back. I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. But he also, of course, has a matching 2012. And we had a good conversation about the cars and what it's like to own one. So this is a, a VIP ordered car. Yes. That's, that's a, a pretty awesome thing. And you worked that out through your connections with uh, through the registry or? Well, somebody? through Ford Motor Company of uh, some people that work at Ford that had Ball Street 2s and knew me through the registry. So yeah, I guess there is a reg registry connection there. The performance level of this car compared to like the old one, the, compared to your 69, is it just the newness of it or is it just a, the, the handling of it or is it all aspects of it? Well, all aspects in, in reality. As far as performance, you, it, it's uh, tough to be the new car with technology compared to old technology, but you don't have the nostalgia of driving an old car like that when you drive a new car like this right it's, uh, so it's so much nicer driving a new car for everyday driving but for real cruising it's still tough to be in an old car is the 69 your preference or is it this one or is it just <laughs> yeah, is it like one. every is it <laughs> well, that, that's a good thing i mean is it is it uh where you're looking at a, a tool for a specific job so in other words depending on where you're going is going to determine which car you're going to take that and maybe distance. The distance, distance I'm, I'll almost obviously take this because of reliability and uh, shorter trips closer to home, I'll take the, the, the 69. Well, I get that. I mean, as one who took an old car across the country, um, not that I regret it, but I certainly understand it. This thing has a good, it still has a good sound to it though. It's just probably more refined kind of yeah no when, you, when you're on the throttle it almost has a hint of that old gt40 sound that used in the movies right yeah and it, all movies back then they used the gt40 sound it was like a canned engine sound that uh like all the movie makers used so i, I think the engineers did an awesome job with this exhaust it was uh, kind of cutting edge now all the cars have this kind of sound Right. Yeah, when this came out, it was uh, it was pretty new. So this car's kind of ordered to match your your '69 as far as color, look. It's got the C stripe. It's orange. Exactly. It's exactly what I wanted, and uh, fits the the bill for being in my garage having twins. 
And, you know, being a special order car, what they did for me, they put my name on the window sticker, which was kind of cool. That's really cool. So your name came on the factory window sticker when you got it. Yep. Uh, I went to the Ford dealership to pick it up the next day. I said, you got a car with my name on it. Literally, you got a car here with my name on it. <laughs> Not too many people can say that. And you, every option that was available for this car, you you got. There's oh, nothing. definitely, yeah. That's it. I want everything on it that I could get. Seats are awesome, man. Yeah, I like the seats in these cars. Yeah, I, I sat in a car with the regular seats. I mean, I'm so glad I spent the two thousand dollars to get that. Right. All right, so I am gonna want to get a. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how that was. I did want to get a drive-by. How do you do that? Same, you don't have the same level of confidence. Yeah, that I, that wasn't really full throttle. I would the you know, RPM. Yeah. I'm shifting lower just because of the cold tires. Right. I know many times I take this car out. It's very few times I don't hit a hard car. Yeah. yeah especially well, when I'm giving somebody a ride. I, you, know, you go through like, the gear so quick, and next thing you know, I was a, I was 110. And like really? Yeah. They can't believe you were that fast that quick. The car's a solid rear axle in a car. I don't know the Ford. This thing is really nailed down. It's it's very 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 track capable, and yeah, this this car is so much fun on the track. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, that was that was right around six thousand. Right. But tires are warming up a little bit. Well, I that's, still, I still am not going to push it. That, I mean, that was always the thing with me and, and my 13 is you just don't know where that see the pants feeling that I, you need to shift in a car where the, the horsepower and torque curve starts to come down. It, it doesn't exist in this car. You're going to hit the rev limiter before you hit the time to shift feel in the, by the seat of your pants. It's not there. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it just wants to keep going and going and going. Right, it just keeps giving you more. It keeps giving you more power. So you really have to kind of train yourself on where to shift that, where your shift points are at. You don't see yourself ever selling this car, do you? No. Yeah, no. that's it. You're done. Yeah. Both both bosses are going to stay with me, and unless something atrocious happens, I just I don't see me selling either one. They come out with like a special edition. I'll last, just have to buy a third car. <laughs> I'll have to buy a third one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Do me a big favor. Hit the like button. It helps with the Alvin rhythms or whatever they call them. Algae rhythms. I can say whatever I want at the end of the video. Nobody ever watches this. But if you would, like the video so that way other people will see it. It'll get moved up and YouTube will show it to other folks. That's all the information I have, and I did pick Randy's brain a little bit about the 2012-2013 Boss 302s. Excellent car. If you have a chance to get one, get one. If I had another bay over it, maybe I need to add a bay and just get a third Mustang in here. That's always a possibility, but then there's, of course, there's a 71 through 73 Mach 1s as well. Yeah, uh, but do me a favor. Like the videos. That'd be appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. So there's 411 subscribers, which is awesome. And uh, there's going to be other a box of other videos over here that I made. And if you could check those out, that'd be cool too. Thanks so much. Till next time, we'll see you.